Welcome back guys, moving on to the next question. So we got these two linear systems here and we got to solve by substitution or elimination and then we got to verify the solution. So starting with number one, we got three X equals four minus two Y. And then over here we got four X plus three Y is equal to seven. So notice here, there's no variable that's by itself without a leading coefficient or a leading coefficient of one in front. So for this one, we can do substitution. I feel like it's gonna get a little messy with fractions. So I'm actually gonna do elimination. So I'm first gonna take this first line and put it in this format. So I'm gonna bring the negative two i over. So I'll have three x plus two y equals four. Then over here, we'll have four x plus three y is equal to seven. And then we wanna get rid of the X's or the Y's. So I'm gonna get rid of the X's. So we wanna get them both to be the same. So what we can do is we can multiply this by four and then multiply this by three. So notice we'll have 12 X in front for both lines then. So this line here would become 12 X plus eight Y equals 16. Right, we gotta multiply everything by four, and then we gotta multiply everything by three. So this would be 12x plus nine y equals 21. And then we could subtract both. So 12x minus 12x would be zero x. The x's go away as we wanted. Eight y minus nine y would give us negative one y. Then 16 minus 21 would give us negative five and we could divide both sides by negative one. So y would be positive five, like that. And then to solve for the x value, we could plug it into either line. Um, so let's plug it in to the, let's plug it into this one because the x is already on the left side by itself. So we would plug in five for y So notice we'd have three X equals four minus 10, negative six, divide both sides by two, uh, three. So X would be negative two. So the solution, the point at which these two lines intersect would be uh, negative two and five, but then we got to verify it. So what we would do is we would just plug in this answer into both lines and make sure that the left side equals the right side. So we'll have three X equals four minus two Y. So if I plug in negative two here and five over here, negative six, four minus 10, negative six equals negative six. So left side equals right side indeed for this one. And then this one, four X plus three Y equals seven. Uh, four times negative two plus three times five equals seven. So this would be negative eight plus 15. Seven equals seven. So we verified it there as well. So we could be pretty confident negative two and five is the correct answer for this first uh, system of equations. Now, what about number two? So number two, we got 4x minus y equals two, and then two y equals eight x minus six. So notice here, this y is by itself already. So I'm gonna do substitution. So what I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna take this line. I'm gonna bring the two over. So I'll have four x minus two, the negative y I'll bring over. So y would become positive here. So notice y equals four x minus two from this line. And then I'm gonna take this expression and I'm gonna plug it in for this y in the second line. So we would end up having two times 4x minus two equals 8x minus six. So now what's gonna happen is, notice we have an equation in terms of one variable in terms of x, so we could distribute. So we would have 8x minus four equals 8x minus six. Bring the 8x over and then bring the negative four over. And what are we gonna get? 8x minus 8x is zero, negative six plus four gives us negative two. Notice we end up with zero equaling a number. And whenever we get that, it means that there's no solution. And no solution means that they are parallel 
lines, parallel and distinct lines, because you could have parallel lines and they could be the same line, that would be infinite solution. If it was zero equals zero, whenever you get zero equals zero, that means there's infinite solutions. But whenever you get zero equaling a number, notice that can never happen, right? That doesn't make sense there. So that would be uh, no solution. And you can actually verify this. So notice that 4x minus y equals 2. Now, if we isolate for the y, we already did that here, actually. I should have just wrote that. It's all good. So this is the first line if we put into the y equals mx plus b format. And then the second line, to isolate for the y, we could just divide by 2. So y would be 4x minus 3, like that. Uh, give me a sec here. Yeah, it would be 4x minus 3. So notice that both of these lines have the same slope, a slope of 4, but they have a different b value. So the way this would look graphically, this line would have a b value of negative 3, and then this line would have a b value of negative 2. This is not to scale, by the way. I'm just kind of showing you roughly. And they both have the same slope, so it would look something like this, positive 4x, it's a positive slope, so this line would be like that, this line would be like that. So you could verify it by putting them both into y equals mx plus b form. They have the same slope, but they have a different b value. If you got an infinite solution answer where 0 equals 0, then both of these would be the same, it would just be the same line. But these two lines, they have the same slope, they're parallel, but they got different B values. And so notice that they're never going to intersect, hence why there's not a solution.